The Look Alive podcast is sponsored by Sonic. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Look Alive podcast. Hopefully you guys are staying well and staying safe. I know we're all still missing sports. We're getting to that point now where it's like, okay, get it together. We got to get some sports back, but still got to stay patient. I know there's a lot of conversations out there on what the best measure would be to get sports back, but still, we're all waiting just like you guys are. But the one thing that was really positive is the NFL draft happened. And it was actually pretty exciting. I think they did really well. And I got to tell you, for those of you who don't understand the production aspect of the NFL draft, it was awesome. It takes so many bright minds and so many people with hands-on um, activities throughout the week to try to get this thing on board. And they did a great job. I mean, there was really little to no errors, I thought, on their end. Um, Technology-wise, you know, we didn't have any hiccups or anything like that. It was actually cool in my perspective to look at the coaches homes look at the players homes and we got some dogs in there bill belichick turning into his husky not really but he was sitting in the chair you know what i mean so i thought it was great i think they did a great job and more importantly the falcons got what they wanted they did say going into it thomas dimitroff the general manager said it was a defensive heavy draft and that's what they got they had six draft picks Five of those were on the defensive side of the ball with only one offensive lineman in there. And one of the five defensive guys, man, you guys are in for a treat. I covered him in my last station when I was in Montgomery, Alabama. His name is Marlon Davidson. He's a defensive lineman from Auburn University, spent four years there, um, has a heck of a football record, but his personality is really what sells him. And I think one of the first things that the Falcons actually tweeted out once they drafted Marlon was, we're going to have to mic him up this year. And yes, you absolutely will have to mic this guy up. He is such a pleasure to be around. I can say that firsthand. Um, you know, on the football field, that speaks for itself. But I truly can't say off the field, Marlon is the same guy all the time. And I hope that, you know, you listening to this conversation that we had gives you a little bit more perspective on what he's really like from the time he wakes up, from the time he goes to bed. Marlon is the same. So enjoy. What's good? How are you? Hey, what's good? What's good? What's good? How's everyone at Madhouse? Everybody's straight. Yeah? Everybody's straight. Yes, Congratulations, no. dude. You're an Atlanta Falcon. Facts, right up the street. Right up <laughs> the street, baby. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Were you a Falcons fan growing up? Um, Somewhat. You know, I used to like watching, um, you know, I was used to play with Grady Jarrett on the game. Deion Jones, those type of guys, the Desmond True Fonts, the Tevin Coleman, the Devontae Freeman. You know what I mean? I, I played with those guys on the game, so you know what I mean? I was pretty much was. <laughs> so you were fans of really the players? Yeah, I mean, the, the players, man, they was, they was pretty good. And I mean, um, I like to play with those, the the Danny Trevathan. You know, like, I played with a lot of them things. I, I played a lot of them, all right? So, I do it. <laughs> all right, so tell me what the phone call was like whenever you got the phone, you – figure out that you're going to be in the NFL? Well, um, you know, when I first figured it out, man, it was like, when he called, I was like, man, I was, boom, I'm dead to the phone now. I'm like, come on, hello. You know what I mean? I'm like, shoot, man, this is it. And they were just telling me about it. I was like, well, I was like, wow, this is a dream come true, man. I'm right up the street. You know what I mean? Well, right down the street, excuse me. And I mean, um, you know, it's a dream come true, man. Everything that I have always put in, you know, um, the hard work, the early mornings, the late nights, you know what I mean? Um, paying off. What'd they say to you on the phone? They're just like, man, um, what's up, Marlon? This is so-and-so from Atlanta. I'm like, man, I don't need, man, you know how long I've been you waiting on this like call? Out? Hey, I don't think I want to say, man, how long, you know how long I've been waiting on this call, man? You know, like, come on, man, I don't even want to hear nothing, man. Tell me you're picking me and let's get it. You know what I mean? That's how I wanted it. That's how I was. They just told me, man, I said, just sit tight. They're going to pick me. And, um, Man, it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. Has it kind of sunk in yet, or no, you're still just so excited? I'm still excited, man. I woke up at 6 o'clock this morning. I thought I um, had my fun last night, went to sleep by 2.30, woke up at 6 o'clock, haven't been back to sleep yet. You know, man, this is, this is, this is my life now. I'm, I'm at Atlanta Falcon. <laughs> went from an eagle to a falcon in a day. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> That's crazy. You, you know what's crazy to me is – you and I had a conversation at SEC Media Days last year when you were returning for your senior season, and you said that 
you were going to return for your senior season so that you can make more money and go higher on the drive boards in the NFL. Did you accomplish that? Do you feel like you're glad? Of course. That? Of course, man. Everybody want that one beside their name. But, you know, it's hard to be one of the 32. But I was, I was one of the 50. So, I mean, hey, I appreciate it. I mean, it's my opportunity to come out here and show people that they didn't pick wrong with Marlon Davidson at all. I mean, to show people that they're getting competitive excellence and they're getting somebody who's going to fight you to the end. That's who I am. I know at Auburn, you played a lot of defensive end, but you played inside too. The Falcons are looking more at you for a defensive tackle, right? I mean, I don't know. They haven't told me anything. So right now I'm just waiting until they give me this call again and, and, and tell me what I'm playing, different things like that, because I can play it all. You know, I can do whatever you want me to. You want me to go out there and play safety. I can go out there and backpedal and get middle, middle read. You know what I mean? I can do this. You know, I just feel like I'm that athletic and I, and I put that much versatility to the game. Do you feel comfortable one way or the other? I mean, it don't even matter to me. As long as I'm on the field, you know, I'm good. I always started everything I ever done. You know what I mean? So I'm not trying to break the trend now. He's trying to come in more hungrier than I was when I was legit back in the day. You playing quarterback then? <laughs> um, no, hey, hey, I can't do that now. I'm going to leave that to Matt Ryan. <laughs> Matty Ice over here, you know what I mean? So we're going to do that way. What's the most surreal feeling to you that you're a part of a Falcons team that has a lot of promise and people hope to be really good? It's crazy. It's crazy. Man, I'm like a little kid right now, man. I probably come off and be like, bro, I was a fan of you. Man, let me shake your hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's the type of thing it is right now, man. This is, this is a dream come true, man. It's a blessing, man. It's, it's everything I ever wanted. And we're getting it. And we're Who's going to keep it. Who's the first person you're going to say that to? You said what? Who's the first person you're going to say that to in the locker room? Uh, Julio Jones. I got to go to Julio. Oh, my God. Man, you don't dude, care that's against some... Alabama? I don't care about that. I'm, I'm going to shake your hand and say, Warrior, man, I'm, I'm glad to see you, brother. I mean, thank you. Hey, hey, that's all I got to say, man. And Grady Jarrett, man, those guys, man. Come on, man. Dante Fowler. Todd Gurley. Man, hey, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Listen, on the call last night, you said that the defense is going to be good next year, and you're, you're confident in that. What makes you so confident that the defense is going to be good for the Falcons? We got uh, Grady Jarrett. We got um, Marlon Davidson. We got Dante Fowler. We got A.J. Terrell. We got Deion Jones. We here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rise up, baby. We're gonna rise to the occasion. I mean, like we're gonna bring that, we're gonna bring that defensive field back to the game. You talked a lot last night. You said brotherhood repetitively. Brotherhood is, you know, in the Falcons mantra. What does that mean to you, brotherhood? I mean, come on, man. I just came from Auburn. We're a family-based team. We're all about family. And you know, man, I step in a in a in a household, man, you come in with respect. And you know what I mean? You lay down the ground rules. I mean, you always protect your brother no matter what. So I'm going to be behind my brothers through it all. If we go Owen forever or forever and zero, I'm, I'm, that's just who I am. You know what I mean? Those are my brothers. I'm going to fight with them. We sweat together. We bleed together. And we go beat somebody up together on the field. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have fun doing what we do best. Pretty like that. <laughs> I, I think for a lot of people that don't know you, um, you know, and your personality, you got a big personality. You're very confident in yourself. Where does all of that come from? I mean, I was, that was when I was from a JIT, you know, like a, a young pup in the country, you know, um, a child. You know what I mean? I used to walk around with confidence. I think they had some shoes for me. I was young and had confidence on the side of them when I was like one years old. So it was, it was pretty dope. Did so, you really? <laughs> nah, I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday you said you came out of the womb and you knew you were destined for greatness. Yes, I knew as soon as my mom, they, they, the doctor pulled me out. Man, they had they had their cap, you know, they put a cap on the kid head. You know, I had the best on my forehead. And then my mom used to tell me, like, you're destined for greatness. Like, continue to stay described, like, stay the narrow lane, walk forward, and be who you are always. Do you feel like a lot of the reason why you are so confident is some of the things that your mom did say to you when you were in high school and when you were younger? Of course, my mom always told me I was the best, so be the best. I mean, my mom she stood behind me being the best parent. She said she got to have the best son. And I mean, she sure do got it. And I mean, um, it's a blessing for me and my family to be in this situation. And I mean, um, we're going to live it up. We are.
All right, so you're a part of an NFC South that is just absolutely loaded. Now you've got Tom Brady on Tampa Bay. You excited to go up against that? Of course. Man, new, new, new England, Tom Brady, the Tampa Bay Tom Brady now. I don't care who he is. As long as he's out down the field, I got to try to come get you. I got to try. You going to be starstruck? I mean, of course. I'm, I probably hit him and be like, bro, I'm a fan. <laughs> um, we all know you're not. <laughs> nah, man, I'm gonna talk my jump, man. But after I'm like, bro, you just don't know, like, man, I've been watching you since I was little. Like, it's it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be like the LeBron James of football. Like, come on, man. All right, so we'll get to Derek in a second. Derek Brown. I do want to talk about him, but when I had a conversation with him yesterday, he told me that you know he's so different off the field than he is on the field something just flips with him but you're kind of the same all the time what kind of trash do you talk on the field oh i talk good trash i'd be like bro i ain't gonna lie to you bro long day i shake my head in a long day just go ahead and get ready for their ride i'm coming dog would you say that you remember uh yeah (laughs) to the team man tomorrow man like bro i'm coming i'm marlon davidson i'm coming for you all right just stay down i'm coming back Told Jake Fromm whenever he got down, like, I'm coming back for you. I'm coming back. Did then, you, you know really I mean? like, told Jake Fromm that? This is what I do. I'm the best. <laughs> What's the most exciting part about now you get to live in Atlanta? You said it's, you know, it's down the road. It's close to Alabama, but it's a big city. And, and now you get to be a part of still the South. I mean, um, you know, the biggest thing about coming to Atlanta is that, you know, it's right, it's right here by home. It's where my family is. Um, you know, I can bring family up anytime I want. I mean, it just, sheesh, this is, this, is, this is what it is. This is what it is. How did Auburn's defense prepare you for the NFL? Come on, man, competitive excellence. We talk about competitive excellence, being able to be fast, field school, being able to hustle, everything, the grit, everything, man. They, they taught me how to screen. Auburn defense put me in this position to be the best that I can be for any organization. And I can put money that they're getting the best out of me every day. What did you work on from your junior year to your senior year with Coach Steele and, and, and everybody else to really just up your draft stock? Everything. I worked everything. Everything from start to finish, how you line up in the stands, how you put your hand in the dirt, how much weight you want to pull on your fingers. Everything. I did, I did it all. So it ain't one thing I did. It's everything that I did. I changed me. And I evolved. I know that it's been an interesting off season and, and training in the way that you guys have, but the cool thing for you is that you've been training with guys like Henry Ruggs and who else were you with? Matt, Matt Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Tyson Renders, the Daniel Thomas, the, the Jawan Taylor. Yep. The, the, the Monte Hagler's like, I've been training with these guys all my life. I, you surround yourself by around greatness. So I'm thinking you can be as great. Does it, help you at all that you know you're in the gym with them every day in the off season and now you've got first round draft picks in there second round draft picks in there i mean do you guys just kind of feed off of each other of course and i mean um being able to play at auburn you know that's the only thing we did come competing against each other just like we go in there and work out with matt wilson and those couple guys and you know, we competing against each other how fast can we how fast can we do the workout how tired are you how 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 good we can do a, a drill like we, we do this every day, so I mean, um, that's the only thing we know about is competing against each other, showing each other who's the best in this day. All right, Derek Brown, I know he's going to be your brother, but now he's not your teammate anymore. But when you guys were teammates, did you guys kind of learn from each other? Yes, of course. I mean, we learned each other mistakes, and we learned each other, you know, good things that they did about each other. You know, like with Derek doing the script second Florida, Derek slipping during Florida, you know what I mean? Like, we learned that, you know what I mean? Like, not to do the junk again, period. You know what I mean? So we, we also fed off each other a lot this year, man. And it was, it was a fun role. It was a fun role. Now he's one of my rivals. I see him two times a year. So it's going to be a pretty show. <laughs> you talk trash before the game? Come on, now. You know I got to go see him and say, bruh, War Eagle, but it's on. It's on. <laughs> so. What's the most exciting part about being an Atlanta Falcon for you? You mean I'm in the A, baby? In the A, A. Oh my bad. What you know? I mean, it's just the fun. The how can I say this? The coming to Atlanta three hours away, man. Country kid, man. Getting a house there, showing people that you know, people like me can make it from small community. You know what I mean? Making sure I do it right and making sure I be smart. 
You know what I mean? It's all about being smart. Now, I mean, being Atlanta, being Adobe Domingo, being Adobe Julio, get it, Jay. Oh, we finna have fun. Maddie Ice. Oh, yeah. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, do you have a message for some of those guys, the smaller town guys? What's your message for them? Like, keep, keep the scribe, bro. Like, man, chase your dreams. I mean, people always say dreams don't, sometimes dreams don't come true. Sometimes dreams are unrealistic. But really and truly, man, you can set your mind to anything. And you can go out there and get it as long as you put everything that you can to that job. As long as you put everything you want into the thing that you, you know, you want to do in your life. Like, man, I set a goal when I was five years old that I was going to be the best player ever. I used to go in there and lift a couch, lift anything that I can, toolboxes, whatever, to get strong, get faster, running outside, taking laps, doing all this stuff. Man, I set my mind to it then. I didn't know I was going to be the person I am today, you know, but I did it. You know what I mean? Like, that little thing that I did back then helped me to be the person I am now. So whatever you do, man, take that initiative now and put your best foot forward and become great in your mind. Then you become great in life. Listen, you've played in Mercedes-Benz Stadium before. Are you comfortable in that building? Yeah, only lost in there. <laughs> only lost one. So I ain't trying to lose no more. <laughs> you like that stadium? It's yes, ma'am, I sure do. Yes, ma'am, I sure do. I think I had Julio locked up, too. So, you know what I'm saying? We were straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm curious, because a guy like you, I know you're just, you're at 100 all the time. What's your pregame music like? Pre-game music, man, first thing I do, I listen to Key Glock. It's, it's a song called Key Glock Monster, yeah. I go to Key Glock, Big Glock, yeah. I go to Young Boy, yeah, Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? I do it a lot of stuff, you know. I be jamming on the game, you know. Hey, game day, I be jamming. I got to go to, then I got to go to that young dog, get paid, young, get paid. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for that. As well. What what kind of defensive player did the Falcons get in Marlon Davidson? Well, they got the best thing they could ever ask for. They got somebody who's going to run to that stinking ball. They got somebody who's going to fight to the end. They got somebody who's going to be there every snap, giving their all. They might well just go ahead and bring the ambulance out there because every day I'm leaving, I'm leaving the whole tank on the field. I'm blowing it all for Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, the NFL is a transition for anyone. You feel like you're ready for that challenge? Yes, ma'am, I am. I played in the SEC. That's it? Point blank period? I played in the SEC. <laughs> Come on, I, man. I asked you that last night, but I want you to tell me again why it is so such a benefit for you to play in the SEC every weekend against top-tier talent to be now in the NFL. Come on, man. We just had three offensive linemen going the first round. SEC, like, come on, man. It's simple. You know, we got – it's the best. The SEC is the best. You play against the best talent every day because everybody want to go to Alabama. Everybody want to go to Georgia. Everybody want to go to Tennessee, the Georgias. I mean, the, the Floridas, the Auburns, LSU. You know what I mean? Like, everybody want to do this. Like, why not come play against the best? So, you remember what you said at Pro Day? Wait, what part? Remember what you said about – you can go against someone every single week and hit somebody and the police won't call you. Remember that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Still stand yes, by that? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, you can just go out there and hit somebody, child, and only have to, you know I'm saying, the police come out there. You know all the police in the stands and stuff on the field, <laughs> all that stuff that they won't even come get me. They just say, just do what you got to do, man. This is life. <laughs> so it come fun at this moment. <laughs> all right. I know it's weird because you're not headed to Atlanta. You're not getting ready to train with the Falcons right now because of how the world is right now. So what do you do to stay prepared? What are you going to be doing? I mean, I'm going to be training at Tello. I mean, just being honest, I mean, I'm a smart guy regardless. I mean, um, you know, I can learn the playbook. You know, all I think is about now is getting in football shape, getting my win back right, and just getting right for the Falcons. This is the difference now, getting right for the Falcons. Are they giving you an off-season training program? Or are you doing some meetings virtually? How's that going to work? I'm not sure yet. You know, they're supposed to give me a call today. So I'm waiting on them. I mean, we're going to find this, find out everything that's going on. So it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to come to me in a minute, you know? So. All right. Well, I am just so stoked for you. I'm so excited from watching you in Greenville to 
Auburn to now you're with me in Atlanta. I'm so pumped. I'm so excited for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I sure am, too. I'm ready to be a Falcon. Yeah, but it's crazy, though, because I just left from being an Eagle to now I'm a Falcon. That's crazy. You're just meant to be a bird. I, I guess I'm going to fly around every day. You know? <laughs> Life has changed, but some things remain the same. We all still get up every morning, and our cars still have cup holders. And our cup holders are still meant to hold cups. Large cups that hold our favorite morning beverages. Beverages that make our mornings a little brighter and a little more normal. Sonic's Morning Drink Stop. Large drinks for 99 cents and large specialty drinks for $1.49 before 10 a.m. For contactless ordering and payment, order ahead in the Sonic app. Tax not included. See menu for details. Mobile ordering available only at select locations for a limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. All right, safe to say, I think we're all really excited to watch Marlon Davidson hopefully sack Tom Brady, which would mean he could lean over to him and tell him he's a big fan. Seriously, though, he actually would do that. So I, I wouldn't put anything past him when he says he's going to do it. Fingers crossed that that happens when they play at Tampa Bay. So we'll see whether or not these draft picks by the Falcons actually turn out to be something great. Hopefully they do. Um, a lot of them will have an immediate impact on the field, which is really exciting. And I know that we're all just excited to see football come back to some type of normalcy. But right now, the Falcons are in the middle of that offseason virtual training. So we'll follow that and continue to talk to those guys. And you can catch all of those interviews right here on the Look Alive podcast. Watch them on our 11 Alive YouTube page or wherever you get your podcasts. The Look Alive podcast is sponsored by Sonic.